Hello, good evening, what is going on? It's your boys the 33 welcoming you to one of the last Anarchy Analysis for Gamecast for this week, as we're covering G2 and Schalke in a pretty interesting matchup from the looks of it, because G2 have been on a slump recently, obviously they lost their last match against MAD, and I do believe they struggled on the game before, and realistically, this second half of the split has been quite bad for G2, sitting on 5 and 6. That being said, Schalke have not fared any better as they've only picked up one win this split, and that was against Fnatic, who are currently in the same situation as G2 in a major slump. Now, for this game as a whole, I want to be looking at Gilius. He is the superstar jungler on Schalke, and he's going up against the two-time back-to-back MVP of the LEC in Jankos. This is going to be an interesting matchup because Jankos has struggled in this split as a whole. He's been one of the weaker parts of this G2 roster, whereas Gilius has been, ever since he's been subbed in, has been this big bright spark for this team and he's trying to get such proactive plays for this Schalke team to try and claw them these wins and the big thing to note as we are loading into Champions Select in 5 seconds is these two teams realistically need this win for playoffs. G2 more importantly need it than Schalke. Schalke are on the verge of not being able to qualify whereas G2 are almost in playoffs locked but g2 are on blue side schalke are on red side as the ambient music loads up let us look at the champ select so first ban is the volley bear big ban there from g2 obviously probably the premier jungler in the current meta Rome champion though is banned out by Schalke as TF hits the ban bench, similarly the bard as well. TF is a big pick for Caps, it allows him to get his Rome game going, it's sort of the thing he's known for on G2 and he's not going to be able to enable other lanes with that champion. Bard's a similar reason, it's a champ that allows a bit of roaming and it is a thing that Dreams would prioritise because it is very very strong. Similarly with the Thresh, another premier uh, support pick that has a lot of good tools and it does lower the uh, effectiveness of the affiliates as there isn't that many safe options to pair alongside him. Barca, a TK or a Braum. Clissa, last band from G2, a strong champion for perks, I'm surprised they actually banned that. Obviously they have other things in mind and Schalke ban out the Syndra, it's a strong pick that can obviously be flexed between perks and caps because obviously they are very prominent on that champion, so that ban has to be respective. The first pick in this phase though is going to be the Oriana for caps, a blind pick Oriana. There is other options though on the side for Schalke which have just been locked in, but Ori very strong, she controls the lane well with the uh, ball, obviously she has got kind of this hard engage tool with the shockwave that can do a lot of damage similarly with a lot of damage tools is the Ezreal and the Azir. Ezreal a high amount of poke with their mystic shots that can be fired out and the more their mystic shots land the quicker the true shot barrage comes out it's very very powerful in terms of damage and Azir with them sand soldiers does do a lot of damage on his own because he gets a lot of attack speed from getting three soldiers out. He's very, very potent in terms of damage and is going to be quite hard to deal with, especially going into an Oriana. I think he's favoured in that matchup. And G2 realise that as they lock in the Aphelios and the Karma. Now, in my opinion, if I was G2, I would have obviously first picked the Ezreal over the Aphelios because. Aphelios realistically needs that movement speed and you're kind of bottlenecking either Mickey or Wonder onto a Karma pick or something that can give some movement speed to this Aphelios to provide him a bit of safety. And that safety tool from the Karma has been slightly nullified with 
the locking of the Nautilus. Nautilus is a great champion into Aphelios because he has so much lockup and he has a point and click CC tool in the uh, depth charge. That is a huge tool for this Schalke side as the combo with the Ezreal to land so much poking is huge and considering the Aziz is also there for a lot of damage this is a very Schalke favoured draft so far that being said late game G2 does have the power spike with that Ori but looking at the band phase for phase 2 we have Malphite from G2 hitting the bench GP and Rek'Sai from Schalke they're removing a very safe blind pickable top obviously they might want to try and force that Karma into the top side of the map and removing GP means that G2 don't have that safety in terms of their pick and Lee Sin Ban has been done as that has been Gilius' big carry champion he could though see Gilius on an Olaf there is also a Graves available and realistically that would work quite well as these lanes for Schalke just want to play quite safe so farming would be quite a good option and that's going to be Car Ziggs which does work in quite well with the combo in with the Nautilus you've got a good engage tool as the Nautilus can just Death Charge and uh, Dredge Line into a fight and lock up a target to allow the burst combo from the Karziggs to come through. And what do you know, the counter to the Karziggs is going to be the Tom Kench. Now Tom Kench technically can be flexed topside, but highly likely that Karma is going up topside. But Tom Kench provides a lot of safety to that Aphilios that the Karma doesn't technically provide because he can just gobble up the ADC keep him safe and allow a lot of damage to come through from the Aphilios as he is taken minimal while the TK takes most of the damage. Set though is the last pick for G2, fairly standard pick in the jungle. I wouldn't have minded say a Graves pick just to allow a bit of um, carry potential from jungle but realistically there wouldn't be any real hard engage from G2 and realistically set provides a little if he showstoppers in and gets a nice face breaker but obviously that would require him hitting onto a very mobile Schalke team as their last pickup is Yawn to provide a big frontline for Schalke which is going to be very hard to deal with as a whole and G2 might not be able to burst him out anyway enough of the pick and ban phase let us get into the game of G2 and Schalke. So we load onto the rift. Uh, let's take a look see at some of the spells, phase rush, on set, and uh, uh, Oriana. A good breaking news advert there. Conqueror on the Ez, which is standard. Um, we do see Unsealed Spellbook on the Orn, though, which is a big thing to note before we go any further. It allows him to pick up, obviously, extra summoners, which obviously is a huge thing for him because he can obviously pick up a Smite if he wants to take Herald with the car zigs and basically double smite it, it provides a lot of tools into locking up targets as well because you can pick up the ignite you can pick up the exhaust and also a ghost is available there you've got a lot of good tools for that on to actually provide and make plays for his team and as such it's going to be quite hard to deal with similarly the tk has his own unsealed spell book which is huge more than likely you'll be seeing that second spell be switched for a TP on Tom Kench in the laning phase just so he can get back and protect his ADC quicker and he also gets the ability to obviously go to other lanes and provide them a bit more safety but junglers starting on their blue buffs they're going to clear them out with ease bot side of the map just standard trading don't know why we get to look at this lane because there isn't much to see early game 
Mid lane, we are going to see the Azir with the lethal tempo pushing the wave in because Ori realistically relies on her ball to clear the wave and considering level 1, she realistically just gets to move it around. There is no tool to obviously clear the wave like with the W as exhaust is going to be used early from both supports, ignite on the side of the Nautilus and exhaust on the TK. TK though does have unsealed spellbox so he can go switch that out though immediately and that is going to be quite interesting to see that bot side matchup as two some spells are already burnt. That being said it is only an exhaust and ignite. Flashes are still available and arcane shift when Ezreal hits level 3 is available so there isn't realistically much to gain as we do see Yankos heading to the bot lane. He is not going to be spotted here. As he enters into this bot brush, he could look for a gank here if the Ezreal and the Nautilus overstep. As Neon is still only level 2, he will only have his Q and W. So, realistically, he won't be able to escape. Nautilus will just have his E and his Q. They have now just tipped up to level 3, so realistically, this time that Yankos is wasting here is not worth it. And Dreams just uses his W, but the dredge line does land onto the wall, and the face breaker does not land. And he just essentially wasted about a half a minute in this bot side map here at Yankos, and he gets nothing out of it. Which is a bad play. That being said, he is going to go towards this Scuttle Crab. And realistically, he could contest to this. But Azir's already here. Flash is coming over the wall from the Nautilus. The Dredge Line lands. And the Azir is going to come in. Take him down to half. That is just going to be Flash for Flash in the extent of that trade. And both the a, a support and the Jungler have Hex Flash. So, not much wasted there. And... All that's going to be gained is the Scuttle Grab's going to go over to the Car Ziggs, who could technically go for the double Scuttle here, as the top side map has not been taken yet. Top side map looks fairly stationary here. Karma, because of the lame bully status in the early game, is going to get the push in on the Orn. And you're probably wondering why she gets that lane bully status. Let's just say it's to do with the match type, matchup typing. Karma is a ranged champion that starts Q and gets a lot of poke and harass. Orn is a melee champion. He is forced to walk into the wave in order to get CS. Whereas Karma can just stand outside the range of the wave. And Orn can't get on top of him as we do see... Yankos getting the second scuttle, which is a good thing for him. It does keep him quite even, even though the CS difference is huge already in the jungle matchup. As Kazix already is above 40 CS, he's ahead of his top laner and his ADC, whereas Set is only ahead of his Tom Kench, which is a huge thing to note. He's not been able to farm as much as we, he is going to hex flash over the wall to get to the Ocean Drake. And he's going to start this up as Tom Kench does know there's a ward in that brush. And usually when there's a ward there, it means there's no ward on Drake. And as such, Set can feel quite safe taking this. Even if his hex flash is technically on cooldown, he's just going to take this for free. Good take here by G2 to obviously get this map pressure bot side and get that Ocean Drake to start this up. Obviously, this now means, though, we aren't going to get the Ocean Drake Soul and it won't be Infernal Soul. So we're going to either have Mountain or Cloud Soul, which realistically aren't the best souls. Obviously, you would much prefer the Infernal or the Ocean Soul. Because they provide a lot more stats and effectiveness. However, you look at everything as it goes. Karziggs has just upgraded his um, 
jungle item, and he's also hit level 6. Set, though, still is not level 6, and realistically, we'll hit that probably off his next camp. He's obviously got blue buff to kill. And top side, Karma is obviously trying to freeze the wave in a good position for her to force the Orn away from the turret and allow maybe the possibility of a dive topside for G2. <laughs> TP coming through from Yori to respond to the Azir TP earlier. And considering there is no objective on the map, bar the Rift Herald that's spawning in just under a minute, it realistically, that Ori TP won't get punished. There might be a bit of a TP uh, discrepancy around the second Drake, but there's no punish to come from it, I don't think, as Blue Buff is transferred over to the Ori. Set is probably going to get level 6 off Grump, as you can see there. Very nicely done. And he's going to look to obviously go for this Rift Herald. Now, the Rift Herald is on a control ward for Shalka, so they have full vision and know that it's started, but the bot lane of G2 has already come up here. Tom Kench could, all, if he was level 6, to get up there to provide a bit of backup. But Ori was already there to provide the safety. And I don't think Schalke should contest this. As the TP is going to come through very late, though. As the Herald's already gone down. And G2 are going to pick that up. They can look to take top lane turret plating. Because Orn, very susceptible to being pushed in. But Ezreal and Nautilus have obviously rotated up here. Nort's just going to hex flash over the wall to keep himself safe. And this should be the possibility of the turret plate in being popped here. As Karma is narrowly going to avoid the QW combo from the Orn. As Set showing his presence mid lane. Obviously, he's not going to get much here. As the Azir is playing quite safe and respectable to him. She, he's just going to walk away, and top side, three members top for the team. Bot wave is pushing for G2. That is a big thing to note. That wave is slowly pushing in, and it is going to force the Orn to have to go down to the bot side to deal with it. And it's going to be three members top for G2. We're going to push this wave in as Karzig is rotating to take the place of the Orn to provide a bit of safety as all... Oh, we could have saw five members top here for Schalke to look to respond to G2. As that control ward isn't going to fall for G2. They managed to keep it alive with the set pressuring the Azir. There is also the Herald to play around. As Orn is under the turret bot side to counter respond to that. As Azir looking to get a bit frisky onto the Ori there. I don't know what realistically he was aimed for there. But he isn't going to get much, but a little bit of chip damage. But this is a very slow G2 game. In my mind, you'd expect to see at least two kills at this point. As the RK, uh, the True Shot Barrage is going to cancel the TP back to base by the Aphilios. So this is a very interesting setup as the Infernal Drake spawning in th 40 seconds is going to be a point of contest, I think, for Schalke as they're setting up vision around here. The Nautilus obviously has got a ward in the pit and in the uh, brush behind red. Scuttlecrap is also going to be going down for Schalke, so they're going to control a lot of this vision down this bot side of the map. And what can G2 do if they clear out the ward here? They're going to see this ward that Yankos is stood on. Obviously, they're going to get a bit of vision, but Schalke are positioning down here f to contest this. And G2 are all walking on the ward here. They are going to know it's there. They're going to clear it out. And the river control is still Schalke's with that scuttle crab in position. And G2 just trying to force it as they're walking up top. Looks like they're giving up Drake here based on where they're going. They're probably going to look to try and get. The top turret with the uh, Herald. If they go quick enough. But look at where Yankos has gone. He's gone to red. He's gone to check red. He's not in position at all for this. He's only just got to the lane. 
realistically, he should have summed it now. Before that mini wave actually hits the uh, ADC for G2, he should realistically drop it now. Or before that wave. As the True Shot Barrage is just going to clear the wave and the turret is going to be dropped here. It's not going to get the turret as one plate's already fallen. It's going to be a second plate and two more. There is still, though, the entire turret's last plating left. And G2 aren't going to break the first turret gold. So, bot side, standard thing. Orn has built up his resistances to the karma with that uh, Negatron cloak turned into Nimbus cloak. Is a big thing for him. Obviously, it provides a lot of safety against the Karma, who just wants to poke him away. Karma, though, has got the Lost Chapters, so she can just funnel through her mana quite quickly and get it back with ease. And mid-wave, Ceres has been picked up for the Oriana. It's kind of a new standard build for most Orianas. They go Ceres, they stack the tier up to max. Once that becomes the Ceres Blade, He'd, instead of Archangels, it provides that shielding that makes it very, very strong for her to obviously step up, provide a bit of safety. As Car Ziggs is around this bot side, he is showing he is going to keep. Oh, Karma is going to have to be forced to TP away. And the Ornhorn is going to stop the TP going away. And Car Ziggs is going to get pick up first blood. Though G2 are going to get first turret blood, so the gold stays fairly even. As Azir is going in on two caps. Lovely depth charge to follow it up. That is going to be a dead Oriana, as the showstopper is going to come in to continue this fight. But why would you re-engage into a 3v1? Not less great ultimate there. Granted, it is point and click, but the follow-up onto the amazing Azir play there to lock up Ori who tried to escape, realistically, is not the sort of play you want to be seeing out of your set. However, Karma, who's just died before this, was able to pick up her Hextech GLP, and this isn't Glacial Augment Karma, this is Summoner Area Karma. So, she's wanting that tool to deal with the diving champions like the Karziggs, like the Orn and the Nautilus, it's to keep them away so that they can't immediately dive onto the team as she can keep a bit of distance between her and the rest of them, as well as keep some protection for her team. It's a very nice tool. I like it on a lot of carries. I like it on Syndra as most importantly because it obviously provides some safety on a champion who realistically has to rely on a scatter of the weak to keep herself safe. However, G2 gonna pick up the second Herald of the game as Orn is just killing this bot lane turret. G2 already got the top side one and I'm not looking for anything. However, G2 summoning straight in the mid, they're looking for an early turret crack with this Herald in mid. It should kill the turret here because it's just above half health and it isn't actually gonna fall. It's narrowly keeping itself alive but obviously g2 kind of had to back away there because car ziggs and orn were looking for the flank there onto them so they were playing quite respectful which is something that you wouldn't have expected g2 to do like 2019 g2 would not have done that as we are going to see set being collapsed on showstopper is going to come out but it does force a jump out of the car ziggs but orn horn comes straight through an amazing sand soldier wall comes out from these here it is going to lock up the kill onto tom kench and then ori gets depth charged and killed off and shalker are six kills up on g2 oh my oh me the next rake is spawning in 20 seconds as well that is going to be probably shalkers because g2 realistically cannot contest it as tp is going to come out here from the tom kench to provide a bit of protection to the Aphelios, but this might be g2 contesting this drake or getting it because there is no sort of presence the spot side from Schalke. Anyway, we'll look at this fight again. Just watch Yankos, who's trying to look for a flank, but 
Yankos just walked straight into the Orn and the Karzigs. He uses his normal flash to get behind him and showstopper him into the team. But Schalke are already there and G2 are quite split up in terms of that play. And Schalke just used the Azirul to kill off two members from G2 for free, essentially, because Tom Kench tried to provide a bit of safety there. And that is going to be Cloud Drake over to Schalke. And, spoiler alert, Cloud Soul is probably the best tool for Kha'Zix, because that cooldown reduction that's provided by it, as well as the movement speed bonuses when you use your ultimate, is going to be huge for a champion that obviously uses his ultimate to go invisible. It allows you to get such good access into the backline of G2 because you can just get there very quickly and do a lot of damage. And who more than a 3 and 0 and 1 Kha'Zix as G2 are looking to kill off this on here, who's very, very bulky. He is going to flash away. Showstopper is going to come out here, and that is the possibility a dead on as the Karma W lands, and he is going to kill off the on. But the re-engage coming out from Neon is going to kill off the set, and Karma is going to have to try and fight this uh, Ezreal, and the amazing Empower Q is going to kill off the Ezreal, and that is going to be a two for two on the map for G2 in favor I guess because they needed that gold and that is their first two kills of the game which is huge for them but Seth is so far behind right now that he realistically should have given that kill over to the Karma realistically because I don't think he's going to provide too much damage into the late game fights and realistically he just needs to build tanky and as such, he's going to get claps on here as Mickey is the target here. As the death charge is going to come through, it is straight put onto perks. And a re-engage though from the Schalke team as Perks just gets hooked. And then the zero just comes straight through. And he's going to kill off both of the bot lane members for G2. And the Shockwave is just going to be whiffed here as the on re-engage onto the Ori is just going to kill her off. What was that from G2? That was... Dumb. In my opinion. They face check the Nautilus. Granted they didn't know he was there. But they placed the control ward. But Aphilios tried to protect his support. He should have realistically ran. He was dead there. And the rest of G2 just came in one by one. It's like a normal team fight in um, solo queue. As every member just comes in one by one to die. And you can't do that against four or five members. You can't just turn up willy-nilly and because you'll just be instantly focused. You're giving the opposition an easy targeting for a fight. And you're not being very safe as perks could be caught out here by the top and jungle for Schalke as they're sitting in this brush looking to... Go for an engage here as the Ornhorn is going to be used here. It is used straight onto Tom Kench, which is a good target in because he is a guy that's going to gobble up the Aphilios. But Perks falls already as the Azir is looking to kill off the Tom Kench. But Schalke get what they want and they kill off Perks, who is not able to pick up anything in this fight. And look at the KDAs here. G2 only have two kills, and they're on the Karma and the set. Everyone else on G2 has nothing, as Schalke are looking to turn onto this Baron. Dreams using that dredge line to keep Caps away from this pit, but the Orb is already in the pit, looking to obviously contest this, as the Engage has come straight onto the set. He's the target for G2, for S Schalke, as an amazing Shockwave is going to land and kill off the Azir. But... That does disengage Schalke from the Baron as Dreams is dead to the Ori. She is going to get the kill here. A double kill, more importantly, as the Orn is going to try and look to engage here. Tom Kench, though, has rejoined the fight with the Abyssal Voyage. And G2 are just going to chase down the Orn here. And that is going to be a dead boy there. And Neon is in sight of G2 and is forced to flash away thanks to the Ori ball. So... G2 come out on top of that play, picking up three kills as we look at it again. So Schalke get this Baron to 3k as everyone dives onto the set. Abadage 
Andy Orn comes straight in, but he's diving into a set who obviously has a lot of close quarters damage, and as such, the Shockwave combo with the Haymaker is just going to kill off the Azir and the um, Nautilus. Then it's just the Ori picking off the targets one by one, and Orn is not going to be able to do enough damage as... Neon misses the True Shot Barrage onto the Tom Kench, which could have actually killed him there. But obviously, the Catfish is able to survive and be an absolute menace, providing a lot of safety to Caps to get that play going. That being said, we do see Carl Ziggs now on this Cloud Drake, which is going to put him on Soul Point here, which is a huge thing to be 22 minutes into the game as. 26 minutes in, Schalke are looking to pick up Cloud Soul. Now, Azir is setting up his Sun Turret in the mid wave, and it's going to be quite hard to push away from this turret because this is going to fall down as Color Forge is used, and that is just a dead Aphilios. He is not going to be able to pump out any damage, set his next follow to the Ezreal, and that is just going to be a dead turret. Shockwave is going to land, and is going to kill off the Nautilus, though, and that is a two-for-one trade there in favor of Schalke, as well as picking up that turret. Schalke are looking to absolutely smash G2 in this game. G2 are playing very sloppy as well, as... The Sand Soldiers are going to be spotted here by Caps. He's going to force away the Azir and he is going to get his own blue buff. And wow, this game is essentially going to be Caps versus 9. It's a 1v9. Anyway, let's look at this again. Just watch what happens to Perks. So, the on Q is put there to stop him from walking back. But the Call of the Forge God comboed in with the Nautilus, locking him up. It just means that the Aphilios has no room to move. The CC chain is so big and realistically is just going to get killed off in that play. So, looking at the map state right now, G2 have 6 kills. Schalke have 16. They have 10 more kills. And Orn is not the right target to be going for in these fights. He's becoming more and more unkillable. Especially now he's hit level 13. He has his two ornaments already online. He's got the Ezreal's Iceborne Gauntlet in his sights to obviously upgrade. As G2 spot out the members of uh, Schalke here. Dredgeline is going to land onto Mickey here. And it is going to force him to walk away. He has taken quite a bit of damage, but similarly, the Orn has. And with the safety option for G2 being damaged right now, this is a good point for Schalke to obviously look to engage to kill off this G2 team, who have got mid-priority and have took up the wave to the Tier 2 turret. But this is going to be quite hard for G2 to deal with, as the Orn's already positioning up. He is upgrading right now the Ezreal tool, and that is upgraded as the Call of Forge God is going to be used. It is immediately targeted onto the oh, Caps. And he is able to escape thanks to an amazing combo from the Tom Kench. But that is going to be Shockwave killing off the Karzigs. As G2 are going to pick up one kill here. But Mickey is in danger as the affiliate... Azir is going to kill him off. Dennis is here killing off the affiliates. Perks, what are you doing? Why are you going into that fight? That was very stupid as the True Shot Barrage is going to narrowly miss the Karma. But what was that by Perks? Perks is essentially inting this game away. And Schalke can just turn to Baron here. Yes, they don't have their jungler. But they're actually going to look to reset here and actually get back. Trinket Ward is obviously used by G2. But... That is quite important to note as we look at this fight again. We see this Orn just immediately look to call a Forge God. He lands it onto the cabs. Dredge line lands as a nice flash over the wall from Mickey is going to save the Oriana with that Devour. And that combo with the Showstopper from and the Shockwave is just going to kill the Karzigs off. A great combo there by G2. But Aphilios just walks in stupidly, gets exhausted. He's then just comboed in by the Orn, and he is just killed. I don't know why you're looking to try and kill the Azir there and go 1v4. 
because Mickey was dead already, the rest of your team aren't going to be going in there, and essentially that was a bad play coming out of Perks, as Schalke is setting up for the next Drake, which is Sol, Sol in 30 seconds. So, Caps is becoming the thing that needs to be killed here for Schalke, as Death Cap has finally been completed on the Ori. So, that damage coming out from her is going to be huge and very hard to deal with. She also has hit level 16 just now. As Teleport is going to come in here for the Azir, who is immediately targeted and is fast of forced to shuffle away. And... A lot of damage did come out from that two shot barrage from the Ezreal as the dredge line is just going to land onto set. Death charge is put straight onto caps. But set has just already dove into the back line. A lot of damage has been done onto Gilius. And he's probably just going to go kill a jungle camp to keep himself alive. Now he's just going to turn straight to this Cloud Drake and pick up the health there. And G2 do have a lot of damage and a lot more health than Shalke here as the Shockwave is going to land onto two. Azir is still alive though and he's killed off two members already and Caps already kills him off just then and he is forced to run away as this should be Cloud Soul going over to Shalke who kills the Drake off just there. But how did Azir live that long? He realistically should have died as that shockwave landed. But Caps is going to escape here. He's going to make it back to base. And Schalke returning straight to this Baron Pit because Gilius is still alive. He's got Smite available to him. And the Ezreal is also there to provide a lot of poke to kill it off. So the only issue is Set is still alive. He's respawned. And he's going to be a hard thing to kill. Even though he is just diving in stupidly. So let's watch this fight again. Watch what happens to Set. So he's immediately hit by the dredge line. That was intended for Caps. A good block there I guess by the Set. Who immediately showstoppers in. Haymaker is used. Chunks Gilius really low. So he isn't able to continue the fight. Now it's technically a 4v4. And... Neon is forced away, so it's technically a 4v3 at this point. And then the Orn just tries to step forward, immediately gets hit by the Shockwave, but Abadage is just able to live after the Shockwave puts him to nigh on zero health. And none of G2 essentially aim any abilities at him, bar Caps. So he is narrowly going to survive until Caps gets the follow-up. But you look at the damage in that fight. Abadage went off 7k damage. 3k more than the most on G2. And 4k more than Ezreal on his team. That is huge considering he was chunked out before pretty much anyone else on his team. But you look at the tools that have been picked up onto these here. Death Crown has finally been completed. Infernum has just been used as the hook is going to land onto the Affiliates. He's then immediately hit by the Depth Charge and then the Azir is just in. He's just going to kill him off and Sed is going to be followed up with the Ezreal auto attack. That is going to be four kills over to Schalke who are looking to end this game as they're pushing down the mid wave here. And Ezreal is just going to have to TP back to base and look to keep himself alive. And... The base isn't actually going to be cracked because there is no minions here to give Schalke this protection. But that should definitely be barren for them. As we, I want to watch this again. I want to watch what Dreams does. Because his depth charge and his dredge line comboing together did so much work onto the Affiliates. I want to see the actual timing because I know Mickey gobbled up the Affiliates as... We look at this team fight again. Aphilios is just stepping forward into the wave. Dredge line is used. Dev charge is put onto cat onto Mickey, sorry. And Mickey just spits out perks instantly. He's looking to put out damage. And because the dev charge lands onto him, it essentially means he's just comboed to death. There's no way he's gonna be doing any damage as TP is weirdly used there by Tom Kench to keep himself. Safe and then is just his recall cancelled. 
But let's see what people think. G2, people are worried about G2 because this game has looked dominant from Schalke. They are decimating this G2 lineup. Perks has not showed up at all today. 0, 6, and 4. And he's done nothing. He's been caught out so much. A shockwave is going to land onto the Orn. But that is not the right target to be turning a fight onto. Who is showstoppered again. But Carl Ziggs is here as a core forge god. Is used to kill off this set. Set narrowly walks away as he pops his gargoyle stone plate. But the Baron powered minions are just going to be crashing onto this inhibitor turret. And Schalke are looking to push this turret down. TP is going to come in here. For the Orn to reset. And he's just going to walk up. Tank up the turret for his team. And down goes the inhib turret. And that's going to be inhib as well. And the mid lane is wide open for Schalke here. To push in these minions to the Nexus turrets. And G2 are on the verge of losing this game. As Caps and... Has to carry this team. He's the guy that you're looking to if you're G2 to keep this game alive. He's been doing so much work for them in this late game. Where the rest of his team have just been trolling. And Schalke are crashing this wave in the top lane. They're crashing the wave in the bot wave. And that is going to be an engage coming out onto the Aphilios. Who's immediately buzzed out. True Shot Barrage is narrowly going to miss him. Which would have, wouldn't have would have killed I don't think. But Schalke are looking to end this game. That's going to be True Shot uh, Death Charge used onto the Ori. And that is going to be an engage onto the Karma. But Seth's already in the back line on his lonesome. What is he doing there? Tom Kent is also there as well. And they're just going to fall. As Mickey is the first one to die in this fight. And now it's just a 4v5. The last inhibitor of G2s is just going to fall. And Schalke are going to look to end this game off this plate, possibly. As there's no real defensible chance here for G2. As resets coming in from Schalke. As the Luton's Echo has been picked up for Abadage. This is quite important. Because guess what's just spawned? Elder Drake. If... Shall could get this. That is going to be game, set, and match. G2 realistically cannot contest this. They need to try and stay alive. They need to keep private perks alive in this game. As he has just kept the minute for so long. He's playing 1v9. And realistically, he needs to carry for the rest of this game. As we look at that entire game stat. Ezreal and Azir. They pump the most damage in the game. They have more damage than the entire G2 team. And Azir almost has more damage than the entire team of G2 combined. That is a huge thing to note, as he's just able to do a lot of damage. As Jankos is looking for a flank here, but he is going to be spotted out by that sweeper from the Karzigs, and down falls the set. He is not going to be getting any flank here as a re-engage from Schalke is going to come out onto G2 members as the super minions are going to hit onto this next turret. The Orn is going to be aiming at it, and that is going to be the knock-up onto Caps. He has fallen. The Infernum ch bullets are not going to do enough here to Schalke, as Schalke are going to get the sweep onto G2 here. They're going to kill off everyone, and that is going to be game as Schalke beat G2. Wow. I can only call that one thing. A stomp. G2 were getting caught out here, there, and everywhere. They were positioning stupidly, in my opinion. They were caught out a lot. As we saw at the end of that game, Set was just sweeped out of that position and immediately killed off because Karzigs can do that. Granted, the game was already over. But the fights that G2 were opting into were not the right fights to take. They realistically opted into 
numbers versus more numbers most of the time, and it cost them a lot, as Schalke just decimated them. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like down below. Subscribe if you're new around here or if you want to, and I will see you guys later. Peace out. Thank you.